Hi, I'm John from the YouTube channels ProCrafts and Casino Gaming TV. This year's Craps for the Cure is going to be held November 11th and 12th in Las Vegas at Casino Quest. The whole thing will be streamed live on the Casino Quest YouTube channel. This year, obviously, we're raising money for veterans moving forward, which helps to raise service animals for veterans with PTSD. It costs $50,000 to raise one dog. That's our goal this year. Let's put one dog into one veteran's house as a group. Join us again for 20 hours over two days of straight up craps play, talk, competitions, dice throwing, strategy breakdowns, dealing practice, you name it. If it's got to do with craps, we're doing it for 20 straight hours to raise money for our vets. Looking forward to seeing you out there live at Casino Quest or on their YouTube channel. Again, if you want to donate, there's plenty of chances to donate at crapsforthecure.com. We have auction items, raffle items, event ticketing while you're there, and of course, live donations and pledges taken during the broadcast. Can't wait to see you there. Can't wait to hook up one vet with a dog. Let's get this done, everybody. See you on Veterans Day weekend. In the meantime, God bless. All right, good morning, folks. Welcome to Coffee and Crafts with John. There's the new promo for the Craps for the Cure. I just got done filming that thing last night. Um, we'll be passing it around uh, to all the all the guys and the gals that are coming so they can start putting it on their channels too and start getting the hype, hype train going for this thing. But right now, we are in the middle of the million dollar challenge, which I have failed at so far. Um, the way this thing works, this is from Buckeye Slim, 300 plus club, what we do here, is um, you start out by 300 bucks is your first buy-in. It's a side bet basically, right? And if I can, in month number one, as you can see here in gold, win 275 any way I can in that month, got to keep resetting the bankroll until I can do it though. Then we move on and we start marching towards the million month by month. So far, um, I lost money the first day. I won money the second day. I lost money yesterday. So I have really... I have like 85 hours in profit sitting here, right? But I got to start over with a fresh 300. And uh, we tried the horseman. We tried the the um, the DC pony. We don't really have enough money to do like the pony the right way. The horseman could work, but it takes a little bit of time. This time, why don't we just come out here and just play regular old inside betting. We'll do a little bit heavier levels and just try and get out of here in a couple of rolls. Huh? What do you think? I don't know if the... Uh, I don't know if something like the the Iron Cross makes any sense grinding away too much. Let's just see if I can't dodge the freaking seven for a few minutes here and, and play a little bit of a regression. What I'm going to do is, is something super simple. Actually, I actually have too many red chips there. Sorry. Um, let's go out at, um, let's do like a one, 160. I'm going to put half the bankroll out there, um, 150, 160 across. And let's just do a little bit of a regress and then a go on each number. If I can get a couple of these things to hit, we'll do a, a regress and go. Um, I'm going to put that over there, just keep it out of the way. And uh, yeah, let's just see if I can make make anything happen this morning besides a disaster. Okay, there's a hard eight and that'll pay 35 bucks. So what I'm going to do here is this, we're going to hit it and we're going to quit it and go right down to table minimum on the number as they hit. Try and replenish our rack as fast as I can. And then we're going to press these as hard as we can. We're going to go like a little, like a, like a one, three, two, four from here, from the, from the base level. We're going to drop way down, but I got to, I got to avoid the sevens here for a minute. There's another eight, five, three, eight. That'll pay 15 bucks. Uh, 15. Uh, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to watch this. We're gonna, I'll, I'll show you how it's going to play. We're going to go 15. I'll play, pay it at $14. And I'm gonna go one, three, two, four on these numbers here. So from one unit to three units goes from 12 to 36. So there's 24, there's six. I'm gonna drop 10 bucks and make it look like $36. We're gonna be an aggressive, an aggressive mover here. 25, yeah, 35, 36 bucks. One, three, two, four. We're gonna regress back down again to 24 if we get a hit here on the eight, but let's just try and hit them. Here we go. Something besides an eight maybe, huh? Five. All right. Same thing on the five. Five pays 35, 25, 
35. We're going to drop it down to $10. Put this back in the rack. All right, we've got almost our 160. Working, working back. There's a four. Fantastic. That'll pay 50 for one. 50 for $1. I'm going to bring it down to $10. Again, table minimum. There's the dollar for the bank. All right, we got $200 and change back in the rack here. Working hard. We're working hard. How about some more eights now? Good time for an eight, huh? There it is. Six to eight. Okay, one. We went to three units. 36 pays 42. Back down to two units. One, three, two. We're going to leave it at a quarter. I like the quarter bet on the six and eight. Um, there's that. There's that. Let's get that going there. Um, and that's going to go to 54 in the next hit. Let's get another eight. Let's make the eight pop today, huh? Three, one, four. Or something up uptown. No, nothing uptown yet. There's a 11 yo. 11 yo. Come on now. Ah, we got a seven. That's a bummer. Almost pulled the eight off. But we did get three numbers to, to regress themselves down, which is kind of fun. Pucks off. Let's do it again. 150, 160 bucks across. We'll do it one more time here. See if we can't get, get ourselves a little better pattern here this time. Come out seven. There's another eight. But that would have been nice. A roll a go. Can we do it? Can we do it? Hard six. Cool. 35. Let's make it look like 12. All the way down. I'm kind of hoping that we can get uh, a little bit longer of a run here. Than just three hits, huh? There's a 10 hard. 10 hard. That's going to pay 50 for one. 50 for one, pull it down, and go to $10 with it. So it's going to be a, a full regression on these numbers, marching our way backwards, and then hopefully get a little push. There's a six or a four, four, eight, and again, 35 bucks, make it look like 12. Puck is going to be off, back to the rack we go. We've got our 300 bucks in the rack, right? There is our 300 bucks that we started with. There is 60 bucks in the rack plus about 100. So we got about $160 out here total in profit, which is pretty cool. We can actually regress all these numbers down and play the 1324 from table minimum, which is probably the smartest thing to do. If I take those down and come out at 10, 10, and 10 across, now we're at 64 across. I've got my 300 bucks back. I've got 50, uh, what is that? That's gonna be 50, 100 bucks locked in profit from today. Yeah, 100 bucks locked in profit from today. I'm locking that up. Matter of fact, I'm taking those reds the hell out of my rack. There's our 100 bucks. Again, we need to make 275, right? We got $100 locked, so I'm good with that. 64, let's make the $64 work hard. If not, we'll stay at 100. Six, two, eight. All right, that's going to pay uh, 14 bucks. And again, I will have to break a little bit. We'll drop the 25 to drop 10 out there. I do have to break a little bit, I guess. I lied a little bit to make her look like 36 bucks. Ten, yeah, baby, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's gonna pay eighteen bucks. Ten, eighteen, and I want to take it to thirty. One again, gonna go to three. There's twenty-five. There's three. I'll take a nickel out of the rack to make it right. Ah, the seven. That's a bummer, man. That's a bummer. But we uh, probably should stop right there, huh? Lock up our money, or you want to play again? Let's play again. Screw it. We're going for a million bucks. 
We're going for a million bucks to play one more time. I lied. I totally lied to you. I'm going to not lock up my profit. I'm going for it, damn it. I'm going for it. And then we'll get to talking about the Labashe here in a minute. Let's go. Six, come out six. Come on now. There's a nine. Oh, I rolled that over. That's a, is a six, three, not a five, three. My apologies. $35. It goes to 10. That comes back. There's an 11 AO Chiro. My friend. My friend Chiro. There is a 5, 5, hard 10, 50, 4, 1. That comes down. Looks like $10. Put the reds over here. And again, we have profit locked in the rack, which is awesome sauce. Let's keep the roll going, baby. Six, five, yo. Another one from Chiro. Come on. Come on, you can do it. Heart six. All right, that's great. Heart six. 35. Uh, we will uh, drop two bucks to make it look like 12. Bring the rest of this back to the rack. All right, let's do it. New point, new point coming. It's gonna be a nine. Stay hot, shooter, stay hot. Give me something on the low side. Here it is, heart eight. Sweet, 35 bucks, 25. I'm sorry, yeah, 35, 25, 35. I'm gonna make it look like 12. So we'll take that nickel, make it look like whites because I'm out of whites in my rack. It goes to 12 bucks. That comes back. There's a four. Fan freaking tastic. Four one. Ah, four one from my rack. It pays 50. Into the rack it goes. Four looks like $10. So far they all hit once. We need to get some repeaters in here, huh? There's the five. Now everything's hit one time. That's a perfect storm, right? Perfect storm across the box. There we go. 50 bucks back to the rack 64 across and then we're just going to play him play the 64 across like a boss here we go to 426 that's going to pay 14 bucks i'm going to drop 10 from the rack and make it look like 36 again we're one three two fouring the box numbers this is a super aggressive play there's the seven we don't get it and i'll Talk more about this in a in a show next week, but there's the uh, there's the run, not bad. And what I've got here, we started with 300, and I've earned 100, 250, 267 is what we earned today. 267. We're supposed to earn 275. Um, if you couple that with what I have from before, we are there. So we have we have exceeded month one. I've got my three. $372 in profit today. So we did a little bit of an aggressive move in the box today instead of trying to play some other system. Made it happen. So at this point, next week, our buy-in level is 500 bucks. There it is. I can safely put away 100, 25, 145, 147 is our kind of keep away profit. Okay. So next week, if we keep playing, right? And we win, maybe we lose our bankroll one day, whatever. If I've won enough to replenish my 300, I can restart next month, the previous month or first level again, without dipping into my 401g account. So we're going to keep this thing going over here and uh, kind of keep that alive as a replenishment. So there it is. There's your million dollar challenge for Thursday. We move on to month two because we rolled awesome and had a great little strategy. Um, I love the, the, the one, the one play regress is kind of a fun one. So there it is, folks. There it is. I'm just going back over here. Let's, uh, let's switch gears. Let's go here. And let me say good morning. Good morning. Uh, wow. Bright lights today. Hope y'all are doing okay on a Thursday. Um, a lot of craps happened yesterday, boy. Um, we had a lot going on and actually, um, we're, we're, a, we're a part of that. Um, so we had, um, a good show yesterday. We actually, I, I thought, in this negative progressions week, we're having some fun. Um, 
there's a lot of me repeating myself, right? Which is don't do it. Don't do the negative thing. But there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses to playing a negative progression game. Big minus obviously is going to be your bankroll. But the pluses are there are some win goals that can be easily attained or readily attained when things work out without a lot of thinking, right? Like we just saw pressing and collecting. You have to kind of work a little bit. Um, you need the perfect storm. With these more um, negative progression or even the positive progression games, there's mechanics built into it that helps you out. So I think that's that's been fun to watch and fun to talk about. Now, for this week, let's finish up what's going to happen today. I'm going to talk to you about a couple of things. One is going to be um, we're going to go back to the old schedule. This is because it's kind of a, a new I didn't plan on this, um, but my work has changed. I'm no longer working noon to 9 p.m. starting Monday. I go back to work nine to five, which means I cannot do an eight o'clock show and a nine o'clock show. I cannot do daily paycheck at nine o'clock like I do now, my time. I'm going to have to go back to the old where it's going to be a seven o'clock show and an eight o'clock show. We're going to have to do the paycheck first and this show second. I may even go, I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. Um, I'll figure it out. I got to really, really look at my schedule, but uh, my schedule for next week is a hard start at nine o'clock. I got to get on Zoom at 9 a.m. every day, which means I got to be done with you all at 8.45. Cannot go past 8.45 ever. So I'm considering coffee and craps going back an hour to seven, the daily paycheck at eight to 8.45 and stopping hard stop at 8.45 and not just, just not being able to, be able to play long. If, it, if a day takes too long, we're gonna have to stop it. Um, or we can keep... 7.30, 8 o'clock is as our time for this show. Maybe 7.30 to 8.30, which, which gives me time. And then um, I can do the paycheck at night. Maybe, it's, maybe, it's, a, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's a coffee and craps in the morning and it's a cocktails and craps at night for the paycheck. I got to think about how that's going to play. Um, and actually, if you have comments or thoughts on what you'd rather see from me, now's the time. Put it in, put it in the chat. Um, I'm cool with doing coffee and craps at 7.00. Seven to eight, having the hour before work. The paycheck at eight o'clock, eh, I don't know, man. I like having the extra time. If the day goes south, I want to be able to play through it. If I don't play through it, that means coming back at lunchtime and doing it again. I don't know if I like that much either. So let's let's table it for today. Tomorrow we can talk about it again, but I want to feed it out there for you. So you let me know what you all want, okay? Um, Red Cross recap, uh, we'll do that in a minute. And uh, we're on Chasers Week on Coffee and Craft. We did the, what did we do? We did the Martingale, then we did the Fibonacci, we did the Dale and Bear. Um, today we're doing the Labiche. Victor wants me to do the Barstow. Um, I, there, you can do negative progressions all day long, right? There's another one called the Barstow, another one of these progression things, right? Where it's you, you bet this, 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 this. And that. I done the Barstow twice live and burned the bankroll twice. Like both times I've done it, it's been over two. I did it the traditional way. And then somebody sent me, the Barso 2.0, which was a little more aggressive, wiped my bankroll out on that one too. That one, um, not that it's the Barstow's fault. I just rolled terrible those days and just crushed it. So um, they're all good and they're all bad for the same reasons. So all these negative progressions are good for the same reason as they're bad. So that's I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, today's going to be the La Biche. And um, yeah, tonight we got TCS, LFC, we got Mac. Uh, Mac and Ed, no BS at eight o'clock, which I have a feeling that's not true. They're going to do some bullshit and you know they are. And I'm sure it's going to call me out for something else today. So we'll see what that's all about. I can't wait to watch that one. Um, because my work schedule is changing, I can actually watch it live tonight. I can actually be here and watching it live. It's eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific. And I get to participate in chat finally and watch it. I'll have Ed and Jeff over here, and I'll have my Phillies over here, and it's going to be uh, you know a little bit of a little bit of back and forth there for me. But um, and Big Easy, of course, has Yahtzee, Yahtzee at ten o'clock. I think that's all that I see on the schedule today. That's supposed to be live. So, um, all right. An update for Craps for the Cure is this: I talked to uh, David at Casino Quest yesterday. We, uh, of course, locked in our dates and times. He's going to do a couple sessions with me, at least two. Um, one of those sessions will be Dealing with David Part 2. Remember last year we did Dealing with David. He helped us out with the box numbers. This year, I'm going to have him work the prop box with us. We're going to work on, on the, the horn bets, the horn high bets, the 
all the hops, all the, 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 the hard math for us, right? When you get weird things like a $17 horn high midnight, like, or how does that pay, right? And there's a formula to it. He's going to teach us the formula. We're going to practice our chip movements and that kind of thing. So that's going to be one session with David. Um, we talked about possibly doing a second session, which is going to be maybe not the wheezy, but taking a strategy of his and a strategy of mine and breaking them down. So what I want to do is show him either the Philly special or what I just did, the one, three, two, four box and have him as a dealer, break down the strategies and say, as a dealer, I would like to deal this or not, because as a dealer, this can work or not, because in my experience, talking as David, um, I might even give him a Wayland thing. We'll do a little ladder type of thing and, and work a ladder with him as a dealer. Maybe the mind, the mind is one of those ones that's a pain in the ass. I think the deal let's do Let's have him deal with it and see what he thinks. And then of course I'll do math with him and break it down with him. Same thing, right? Um, break down the wheezy or break down, I'll actually break down the squeeze play with him. Why I love and don't love the squeeze play. There's reasons for and against it when you see different roles. So that's going to happen for sure. Um, I talked to Brian from how I craft shooters like five minutes ago over, over text. We're going to do a version of the, so you think you can press live. And what I'm going to do is we're going to cherry pick 20 rolls. So we don't roll the dice every single time. Cherry pick 20 rolls. Um, I'm going to have three or four people that want to try and press against the rolls, basically, and um, give them 640, like Brian does. Say, I'm just going to present the rolls to them as they were done. And everybody's going to do the exact same set of rolls. Um, pressing the ex their, their favorite way against those rolls, we'll see who wins the most money. So that'll be that'll be that. That'll be super fun. A um, couple competitions in the, in the works. We're going to have the Crap Angels there for guys versus girls throwing competition with you know, me and Alfredo and a bunch of others. Should be a lot of fun. That's the crap for the cure. Um, you saw the promo earlier that I worked on yesterday. So I think we're getting the schedule fleshed out. If you look at the website, the schedule pretty well fleshed out. You'll see um, what's planned for it. Um, so yeah, there it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get on with the next here. Um, Dice Dr. Dan says coffee and crafts, 730 to 830, and then brown water and other brown stuff in the evening. Yeah, we can do something like that. I can definitely switch morning and night. I like going back to back because I get kind of in craps mode and doing two straight hours of it's great for me, but the work schedule is what the work schedule is. I may not be able to, to do that. Um, Waylon asked me, did I see Ken's live last night? I did see Ken's live last night. I was there in and out. I was early in, uh, I, I missed the first 20 minutes of it. Then I came in for the next 20 or 30, then I had to leave again for work. Um, I know that um, the, the tweak you made, the five and nine thing, went down to its last bet and then fought itself back, right? Which makes the point of the negative progression thing. Let's, let's actually get into to that in a minute here. I wanna, I wanna discuss what I saw last night and how these things typically work. So quick recap, Red Cross did well yesterday in the paycheck, um, three and zero so far, knock on wood, we're doing okay with it. The rolls have been good for me. We've been rolling three, four, five, three, four, five, twice in a row and getting out, um, which is good. I think the levels are right. I would consider going up a little bit and making the five, nine, six, and eight at 75, 90, and 90 instead of 60, 72, and 72. Um, it's not a huge difference. You're talking about 15 bucks extra on the five, and you're talking about 18 bucks, you know, 36 dollars on the seven or the six and six and eight. Fifty dollar raise in the stakes but it makes the bet so much easier to pay. It's like all the white chips and crap, it's a pain in the ass, right? If they go to 75 and 90, they pay a clean 105. The field loses 30, it's a nice 75 hour back to the rack. It's nice and simple that way. I'm considering the move. Um, I don't know yet if the bankroll supports it, but it feels like that's a better move. Um, we'll, we'll see. Um, that's the only niggle I got with the whole thing is that it's, it's a pain in the ass with this, with the, with the weird size bets to put the money out there. It's harder to add it up. So let's consider it as a, as a move, maybe for next week. We'll see. Maybe, maybe today. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe tomorrow, whatever. It's doing good. It's doing good. And again, I got a Friday Follies idea for the Iron Cross. We're going to do this, the, the, the world's most aggressive Iron Cross next Friday. It's going to be fun. Fun, fun, fun. Don't ever play it, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, all right. Chasing losses. Let's talk about chasing losses. We, um, this whole series we've been doing on loss chasers, negative progressions. I say friends don't let friends chase losses because chasing loss 
requires a massive bankroll. The basic principle behind chasing your loss, as you probably know by now, is upping your bet amounts as you lose. And when you write the ship, right, it's a way to ride the losses out. I ride losses out by getting my bets as low as I can, staying low, and then when the tide turns for me, I start getting more aggressive. That's the way that I and most craps players approach it. It's a bankroll friendly way to play. The chasing loss thing is saying, no, we're going to lose and go up, lose and go up, lose. We're gonna ladder up either a small one unit ladder like Waylon does, the Dylan Bear, a full parlay, quote unquote parlay, a full doubling of your bet as you would in a Martingale or by some rote progression like you would with the Fibonacci or the Barstow, okay? In some measure, you're raising your bets as you, as you lose. The, the nice thing about that is as, as they win, you're coming down. When the ship gets righted, those bigger wins eat up the earlier losses and you can get yourself back, back to even pretty quick. The bankroll recovery, the loss recovery mechanism is built into a loss chasing system. However, the limits of this thing will get you. You will at some point run into a table limit where you can't keep going up in your losses. If you lose too many times, you can't, you bounce into the ceiling and you can't go any further. You also have bankroll limits. At some point, you don't bring enough money to the casino. You need, you know, maybe a hundred to one of your base bet in some of these things to get through it, which is a lot of money, right? A $5 bet, you know, you might need a hundred times five dollars to get in there. You might need 5K at the $5 level to get through some of these things. It's very difficult um, to, to chase loss in a bad streak. So know your limits there. Um, you should know at least what it looks like for you to lose 10. How much bankroll do you need to ladder up or progress your losses on 10 straight losses? Know what that number is, okay? I will tell you this, 10 straight losses is not unheard of. 12 or 15 straight losses, excuse me, not unheard of. Seems impossible. These things are based on that's never gonna happen. At some point, we're gonna be okay. True, true that, but it happens. You can lose six in a row, win, run, and then lose six in a row again. You've lost 12 out of, out of, uh, out of 13 shots and you're out of money. That happens. The impossible will happen. It's guaranteed that the quote unquote impossible will happen. So you got to manage your bankroll. And I say, don't tempt fate. This is an advice from Ken and Ken knows gambling as well. Don't tempt fate. You get to level five in a progression and you get back to even. Boy, you won, you won the war, get out of there. You won the battle at least, get out of the war. Come back later on. Don't tempt fate. Sometimes you lose five, win the one or two that you need to get back to square. That's God telling you to get out. Get out, get out while the getting's good. Don't tempt fate in that session. That's some advice as you run through loss chasing. So um, again, the pros of this style of play, you know your win count. You know what it's gonna take to win. You know exactly how many wins you need at what levels to get back to even. Your losses are quote unquote easily recovered. It's built into the system. And again, you're gonna run into math. Probabilities will get you. Table limits and bankroll limits will get you out of this. Okay, you're gonna lose six in a row about 2% of the time you play 200 times, you can bet that about one out of 200 times, you're, you're gonna lose the whole thing 84% of the time. Guaranteed, that'll happen. We've gone over the Martingale, doubling your bets as you lose. You can do a Marty plus one to increase your win, but basically the Marty says, I lost 10, go to 20. Lose 20, go to 40. Lose 40, go to 80. Win at 80, I'm all the way back. All my losses are covered, plus my first unit of win. It's nice in that respect. It's very, very volatile to your bankroll. The Fibonacci is a sequence of bets that you do. Based on previous loss amounts, you bet the next level. You come back down a couple levels. So it's less aggressive than the Marty in terms of money on the table. It's also twice as slow as the Marty coming back down. The Marty, one hit in your back. Fibonacci, if you're at level five, it's gonna take three hits to get you back. This is what it is. With less volatility, be comes more win requirements. The, uh, the Dell and Bear, which we showed yesterday, which is the, 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 the method that Wayland's Way Craps has made famous, which is up a level as you lose, down a level as you win. Um, that's a nice one because again, you're not going too crazy in the bankroll, right? You're going, going up one level at a time, not a full bet stack every single time like the Marty. So you can last a little bit longer. It takes longer to work your way back down that ladder. Do you need a bad run to get up high? You need a great run to get back low, okay? Um, last night, uh, Ken from Ken Knows Gambling did a uh, can I beat it or not, or, 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 or paycheck or bust, basically. 
And he had uh, Wayland, one of Wayland's strategies go down from 5,000, went it lost 4,000 bucks. He had his last money on the table. He's like, well, one more seven and we're done. Well, he caught a string of fives and nines that got that thing all the way back and it won 600 bucks in the end, right? It fought back from its last bet and it caught the perfect run. It caught a really bad run to get down there and then it caught the perfect run to get back. It was like a big old V-shaped thing. Um, usually these things, you're kind of bouncing around a little bit and you're kind of like this. That one was like right in the dirt, right in the sky. It was pretty cool to watch. It was a, it was a dog fight. It was definitely a dog fight and it worked. So um, Wayland says, hard to beat the Marty with the Iron Cross. The problem with that though, you're, you're right, because it's if, as long as it's not a PSO, you win in your back, right? One win in your back down. You need to have like 10 PSOs in a row to happen. Now I guarantee that will happen to you at some point. But um, the problem with that is that it takes so much money to get out there, right? If you do a regular Iron Cross, like the, the base, base, base Iron Cross, like 25, 30, and 30 on the five, six, and eight, and 10 in the field, what is that, 85, 95 bucks? right? So it's a hundred bucks. That goes down, you're out there for 200, then 400, then 800, then 1600. And when you're at 1600 bucks on the felt, you're looking at what it, what's, what's that going to be? Three, 300, 350, 350, and, and whatever. That's a ton of dough out there. You need a massive bankroll to do that. And you get to level 10, I don't even know what level 10 would look like. It would take an enormous freaking bankroll. But that's the one way a Marty and craps might all, I hate to say, don't God strike me down where it could make sense because at least it's the only thing is a seven or the 85% chance that it's not a seven brings you back. If it's a field win, it's going to take three of them though. The box wins cover you in one shot. The field wins don't got to think about that a little bit. So it would be tough. It would be tough. I wouldn't, I would never do it unless it's on bubble craps. And even then I had to think about it. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, thanks for that, Waylon. Let's move on. Let's move on today. And I want to talk about the Labache. I don't know how you say this right. It's a French word. Another, another French guy. These French guys and their and their and their single zero roulette um, systems and their baccarat systems. Here's how the Labache works. It's a very it's it's actually an interesting one. You basically pick a win goal. Hey, I want to win five units. Right? And then you spread out your units on a piece of paper. I'll show you how to do it here in a second, but you 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 lay out. If I want to win five units, I put the number one, 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 five number ones on a piece of paper. Okay. I pick any two of them. The classic way is to take the ends, one and one from each end. You make a two unit bet. Okay. If you win, you cross those numbers off of your list. If you lose, you've lost two units. You got to put two units back up into your list, either one on one on each end or two on one end, however you want to do it. As you win, you cross out the, the, what you bet. As you lose, you add your total loss to the thing. You can make this take as long or as little time as you want to. And I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. And you just roll it up. The pros to this, you know what you're going to win. There's no question when you complete the series, you're going to win your goal. It's the baked into the system, which I love. Um, you can also choose how aggressive or passive you want to be. And again, I'll show you what I mean by that here in a minute. Um, there's no need to worry about your rack. We talk about like in the Labache or in the um, the Dylan Bear, in the Marty, in uh, the Fibonacci, you got to manage your rack. You have to you always know in my head, do I, do I keep laddering? On this one, you never do that. You just got to cross all the numbers out. When you cross the numbers out, you're done and it's over with. And that's it. Um, however, the con to this thing is it can line you up for a disastrous run and it can take forever if you're too passive with it. Okay. Um, your bankroll needs here are not known. You don't know what it's going to take to get out of it because we don't know what you're going to bet. So your bankroll's got to be freaking enormous. Enorm oh, Waylon says put your loss in the field. That's interesting. Um, that's that's very. We should that that I'm, I'm going to revert here for a minute. That right there is going to be a Friday follow. You and I will do this on Friday follows one day. How about we do Friday follows with with the Iron Cross an Iron Cross Friday follows competition next Friday. You heard it here first. All right, that's what's going to that's what's going to happen. For sure. I love that idea. All right, let's go. Lava Shea. Here's how it looks. Let's say you have a five unit win goal. Five units. You put the numbers one, 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 one on your on your piece of paper. Okay. The end points, the ones on the outside, that's your bet. You're gonna bet two units. Okay. If you lose it, you have to add those two units to your list. Classically, you add them to the end. Now you have two on one end that you just lost. 
and now you're at five ones plus a two that you lost, your next bet would be three units, okay? If you win your three, you can cross those out, and now you're left with four $1 bets on the inside. That's how the Labache works, okay? If you don't like that, let's say you lose a three and I don't wanna put three on one side where I'm betting two and three for five whole units, you can make the three look like three ones and sort of spread it out, but that makes your, that makes your time at the table a lot. It seems easy to do this. When you, when you look at this and go, that's so easy. Just gotta win my units and I'm done. It could be as easy as three wins and you're out. It could be as difficult as needing 100 wins to get out, depending on the run. So I think we should go play it. I think we should go to a table and play it out. I'm gonna bring my, my I have a tablet here that I'm not sure you can see. Um, so let's, uh, let's bring this over here and I'm not sure how this is gonna work. If you can see it, great. If you can't see it, then you'll have to just trust me, I guess, right? Um, here's the tablet and I need to get another rack over here. Um, that'll be the rack we play with. Um, this will be the rack that we, this is our million dollar rack. Put the million dollar rack over here out of the way. Empty rack over here. Let's put 5K into the rack. May or may not be enough. We're gonna try and win five, five units. I'm gonna take 5,000 bucks to win five units, 500 bucks. We're gonna try it on, on a quick version of it. Um, let's see here, if I do this, I'm gonna write on the tablet and let's see if you can see it and I'll put, I'll put it right here. Can you see if I do uh, one, 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 can you see that? Oh, you can see that, okay. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try and do this as bad. I'm gonna do my best Chris from Dice DGen impersonation. We're gonna bet the field. We're gonna do one and one. Okay, one and one. Our first two bets, don't need a puck. I'm gonna work just the field. So our first bet is gonna be two units in the field. The two outside units, right, one and one. Let's just roll dice and see what happens. We're gonna, we're gonna labache this thing. I'm gonna do it aggressively the first time, passively the second time, so you can see how, how both ways work. Okay, there's an eight. Okay, so we lose, we lose right away. Lose our two units. So what I have to do is I have to add two units. I'm not gonna try and write upset. I'm gonna have to add two units to it. So the one and one failed. I'm gonna add a two to the end. Now I'm gonna bet one and two for three. So three units goes out. Can we get a field number here? We do, we get a nine. That's fantastic. Watch what I do here. We get a nine. That's three units, okay? I'm gonna put back in my rack. There's our starting bankroll. There's one of the units in profit. What we can do is cross these out like that. That's the way you would do it with a piece of paper. You cross them out. Um, because I have a tablet, I can erase them. So I erase the numbers. Now I'm left with four bets to place. Again, we're gonna take one from each end, like so. That's a two unit bet. And we catch a seven. So we lose our two units. And again, we're gonna have to write um, a two on the end. Our next bet is gonna be the two ends, one and two. Is that, did I make that two correct? I tried to write it upside down. It's a terrible looking two, but it's a two. Okay, there it is, two units on that side, one unit from the other side, that's three unit bet. That's gonna be a six, we're gonna lose three units. Now watch what happens here. We're gonna lose three. I'll put this up in the bank. So we lost three, I gotta put three units out there somewhere. Okay, I can put it on this end here, or I can put it in the front. We'll put it on the end for right now. My next bet now is three and one is four units. Okay, you see how this thing can creep up on you and playing it the aggressive way that I'm playing it here can make it super volatile. I'm gonna show you the passive way to do it here in a minute, but there's now we're betting four and we catch a yo. Thank God we got a yo. All right, we win four units. Boom, back to the rack, back to the rack. Our bankroll is good. We can cross off the three and the one because we just won that and now we're back to here again. One and a two. 
Oh, I didn't put that out there. There's three, three units. We catch a nine. That pays three units, which is awesome sauce, right? There's our starting bankroll. There's three units in profit. When I cross those off my list, what you'll see out there is I've got a two unit last, quote unquote, last bet is two units. If I win that, we'll be at our goal. Let's win it right here. Let's make this thing work, baby. Come on. Ah, we got a five, three, two. Bummer. We lose two. So again, I'm going to put two out here. We'll put it in the front. Our next bet's going to be two plus one is three. You can imagine like doing this with a piece of paper, um, your paper becoming kind of a mess as you go through it. There's a nine. So far we've been bouncing around a little bit, just kind of back and forth, back and forth. Three unit win. And again, I'll put that in the rack. There's four units in profit over there. So if I take away the win that we just got, we're left with a one unit bet. Our last bet is a one unit bet. We've crossed off every number except for the last one. Let's get her out there. Let's catch a field number. We got a deuce, so that's it. We crossed off every number, right? There's the win. There's our wins. Our profit is five units. We started out saying we wanna win five units and we did. Uh, where's my pen? I lose my pen, did it roll off the table? The hell, how come, oh, there it is. It's black, it blends in too much. There it is, we won. That's it, that's the Labache. Pick your win goal, win your goal. Nice and simple. Now this time we did it with all the, with the, the, the full loss going on. Okay, let's take the, the wins away. So day one, session one, it worked out. Let's do it again, we'll do another five unit goal. One, two, three, four, five units. Okay, this time I'm always gonna only add one to the end. So we're gonna start out with our one and one. Two unit bet. I'll show you this time we'll be a little bit more passive with our losses. That's great that we get a hard 10, it wins two. One, two. We can cross those off. Taking from the ends, one, two. Two unit bet. One, two, three. This is gonna be easy money, right? I'm, I'm showing you how to make how to make easy money here, right? One, two, three, we win two units. That's great, those can come off. There's four units in wins. Our last bet is a one unit bet. We catch 10, but that was easy. We, we won three in a row, right? Boom, five unit win, that was a terrible example. Let's do it again. I want, I want you to see how it looks when you have a massive losing streak how to play passively because it's not always gonna be this easy. Let's do the fives again. One, two, three, four, five. Again, our first bet is the two ends. Four, but are we just gonna hit nothing but field numbers here today? There it is. Um, that should have been two units. I'm a dumbass. That should have been two units. Let's cross those off. Okay, we stay out there with two units. Because we're gonna bet, again, the front and the back. Looks like, an, oh my God, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna do nothing but win. Nothing but wins. Nothing but wins from John today. All right, that's gonna be another win. Awesome. Now it's a one unit bet. We won, we won. Let's win our last bet. Nine, okay, well, there it is. I just won 1,500 bucks in three seconds with the Labuche. That's the world's greatest strategy right there. Let's do it again. Two, whoops. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's try win five units again. One, two. Way too easy, right? It's way too easy. There's a five. All right, we got a loss. Wow, how about that? Okay, now this time, check it out. The first time we did this, I put a two 
on the outside. You remember that? This time I'm gonna put one and one. So one on each end. So instead of doing a two unit and one unit bet for three, I spread it out, the loss amount. I'm spreading it out like this. So it's still a two unit bet for me, but see how this is gonna take a little longer and more wins to get it right? There's a nine, five, four. That pays our two. Basically covers the loss from the last one. Now we're back to the original. Leave our two out there. There's a yo, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do nothing but win today. I'm just gonna do nothing but win. I'm a winner, I'm a winner. Okay, cross those off. What a bad example of a negative progression when all you do is win, huh? There we go. Seven, okay. We lost. We're gonna lose two. And again, instead of just putting a two on the outside, on one end, we're gonna go one and one. We're gonna spread our two units out. So we don't have to go deep in our bankroll for every bet with these massive bets. There's a nine. I'm sorry, there's a, the outsides. Um, if you get into an ugly spot, you could be at 10 and three on some of these bets. Today's not that day for us. Obviously, obviously today is gonna be a stellar. I'm worried about this now because I'm burning all my luck in here, which means the paycheck is gonna be ugly. <laughs> I just had this bad feeling. Aces, all right, now watch what happens here in the field. You get this, this extra deal, right? Where you're looking to win those two. So you win those two, which they can be crossed out, right? And you win the extra, which means you can cross that one out to never have to make that bet, okay? If I had more units up here, I would cross out a one for every extra that I won. All right, let's do another run here. Maybe what I'll do this time is I'll, I'll do this. Let's do, um, I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna go one, two, one, two, one. Let's see, two, four, five, six. Well, sorry, that went the wrong way there. How do I change that? Um, the hell, it changed uh, orientation on me. Do I, do I do this? Hold on. How do I fix that? Hmm. I'll set the portrait, there we go. Okay, one, two, one, two, one, two. That'll be our new progression, okay? That's gonna win us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units. Let's, let's win nine units this time. And again, I'll never go above a two unit bet. So we're gonna go one, two as our first bet for three. Here we go. It's a six. So we lose three units, okay? What I'm gonna do here is this, we're gonna erase those, that was our active ones. Now I gotta put three units out there somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is put two in the front and one in the back like that. If I had to go to line two, I will. So we're still gonna bet three. I'm not gonna go past that if I can help it. But I don't gotta put the full loss out there every single time. There's another three unit loss, two, one. All right, we lose that. And I can do down here, below the thing, I'm gonna have to go one, two, one, like that. And now I've got, again, you can pick any two you want to. Let's go ahead and, go, and do, um, uh, we'll do the one from the end of the line and the two from the start of the line. That'll be our two bets, three bit, three units. Seven, wow, is that three sevens in a row? The impossible that never happens, happens. There's three. And again, we'll do another uh, two. That's a two and that's a one. Let's keep that pattern going. Three more units out there, so I'll take a $500 chip. We'll put out three with two. Eight, oh my goodness gracious, we lost another three. Wow. So again, it's gonna be another two and one. Look at this thing go now. You can see what I'm saying about 
it can take a long time. You catch a bad run, you're gonna be in hell for a little while here trying to catch back up. All those runs we had earlier are gonna, are gonna they got eaten up, we made 1,500 bucks in two seconds. Now we're gonna have to fight a little bit, right? There's a three unit win, which is great. I can cross off the one in the front and the one in the back. Now we're gonna bet the one in the front and the one in the back. Still three unit bet. So we're basically same betting in this pattern here. Let's do another eight. Okay, that's gonna be the, and watch this time. I'm gonna be super passive this time. We lose three. We're gonna go one, two, three. I can do it like that too. I don't have to put two and one or a three. Long as I get three units out there, we're gonna be good. This time we'll do one and one. We're getting in a bad streak. So I can just bet two here. Six, holy crap. Here comes the negative Nelly run, right? We're gonna lose two. Um, we can put a two at the front. Take 500 bucks out. Here come the dogs. So the dogs may start their thing. So <laughs> I'm sorry if that happened. There's a 10, six, four, 10, that's great. We're gonna win. Uh, oh, I should have three out there. Uh, three, my, my bad. It would have been two and one, that's three. We won the three, cross them out. All right, what's our next bet? The front is a one, the back is a one. We have a nice little, we have a breather here. A little kind of built in regression because of how we did our numbers. There's an eight. We lose the eight. We'll put one on each side of it. See how this is going? Where it's easy, it's easy when it's, a, when it's not going well. You can do the math here, there's another eight. How many wins I gotta get? to make it happen now, right? The deeper we go, now it's a two, right? I can do another, I'll put a two down here now. We'll do another uh, a two down there. So now we're gonna play the first one and the last one. Look at this row, row three. I've gotta win two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 17 wins I gotta make to make it work. That's how this is gonna turn out. So there's one and a two, that's three. The longer it goes, the longer it takes, but you know what your number is. You know what, what, it's gonna, what it's gonna look like in the end. Eight, lose three. That's a huge bummer. So we'll do a one and another two. We'll put three out there. Good Lord. Can we catch the same run we had before? We catch the same run? Um, there's a one, there's the two. That's our bet right now. Oh my God, we're getting killed here. There's a seven, we lose three. And again, we're doing these baby bets. So we lose one and two. We're gonna add one and two. Another three out there. Seven, wow, wow. I asked for it to be hard and look what happened. Holy cannoli. Um, there's another set. We lost again, three more units. We can have, we're, we're out of room. We're gonna do another one and another two. Look at this damn thing, huh? Look at it go. Three units out there. Now we can start getting more aggressive, right? We can go and say, I'm done with this one, two bull crap, right? There's a win of three, which is great. We can cross out the first one and the last one. That's nice. Our next bet would be one and one, that's two units. 10, let's catch, let's catch a hot run, huh? We win two, we can cross out the first and the last, and look what happens here. Now we have a two and a two, right? It kind of leans into a hot streak here. Let's bet all four right here. If we lose the four, we're gonna be in deep trouble. All right, but let's go, let's, get, let's, let's catch a, a little field run. Oh, we got a seven. What a bummer. What a bummer. Sequencing got us that time, right? We'll take that four away. And we got to write in four somewhere. Uh, we can do it with my pen. We can do either a two and a two. We can do a one, 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 right? One, 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 one is also four, right? You can do it however you want to. I could have done just a four at the top, right? You can be 
aggressive with it and say, well, screw it. Let's really get in this thing and put a four up front, okay? And we'll do a four and a two and throw six units out there and try and catch it real quick, right? Let's do it. Let's put six out there. And again, it's up to you. You have the power to be as aggressive or passive as you want. That could be four ones and you're betting two units at a time, or you can try and grab some back and throw six units out there and see if you can catch a good one right here. We got lucky. We caught us a nine, which gets our six units back, right? That's fantastic. We can cross out the four, cross out that two. And now we're back to, oh, that was from before, two unit win, one, two. We'll leave two out there. We'll put these two back in the rack. Let's go. Six, five, yo, we need some of those bonus wins, right? We need some bonus wins. Put all that back in the rack, cross out the ones. And now the pattern has us doing a two and a two, front and back. Back to like somewhat normal levels. It's a four unit bet, it's a big one. Let's get it, let's get it. Ah, we got a six, three, three, six. We lose the four. This is not very good in the chop, I can tell you that, unless your, your bets are up. We lose four. Again, you can do it however you want to. One, two, three, four is just fine. Ride it out. Right, you can play it how you want to play it. We're about to get we're about to get really aggressive here because we're we're against time. So I'm going to go and bump the bets higher. Uh, six, three. That's going to be two hundred bucks. I'll cross those out, which is fantastic. We're back to another two unit bet. Let's win two. Let's win two for old old fatso here. Come on now, give me one. Six. Damn it. All right, we lost two. I'm getting texted like crazy. I think it's, it's my wife or it's one of you. One of you saying I'm a dumbass or it's my wife saying I'm a dumbass. Either way, I'm a dumbass, I guess. Um, let's go two, one, three. Play it for a few more minutes here and then we'll, we'll call it for what it is, a five. Okay, now I'm getting pissed, okay? So what do you do here? I can write down, um, let's see, three goes this way, three and a two. Is that a three or is that an E? Did I do it ass backwards? I did, I wrote an E, what a dummy. Three goes this way, three and a two. So now we're gonna bet two, two, four. Front and back, two, two, four. Look at this awful run. Those earlier runs were so easy for us. Now we're just getting pasted. Getting pasted, the freaking field, man. The field is like all or nothing, I swear to God. Hey, we got a midnight, check it out. All right, this is awesome. We have four units out there. That's gonna pay four. So the first thing we're gonna do is cross out what we're supposed to cross out. That makes that good. Okay, now we're gonna win an extra eight units. Cause triple field table, okay? I can cross out any eight that I want. I'm gonna cross out three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I crossed out eight numbers. We'll put this one over here so it lines up better. Look at that. So one hit, that's why the field sometimes makes some sense, can kind of get you back. Five, 10, there's 1,500. It almost gets our, almost gets our lost purples back. Can you believe that? Yeah, we're still way down, but our numbers are more manageable. Our next bet's gonna be two. You can see right here, one in the front, one in the back, we're back to normal size betting. Let's catch two. There's a three, ace deuce, that's great. That wins two. Cross them out. This is a grind. Our next bet, two and one is three. Let's keep the run, let's keep the run. Come on now, six, five, yo, I have a bad feeling. There's three unit win, cross out the two, cross out the one. Now we're back to another one, two. Stay at three units. Uh-oh. Must have hit a button. Here we go. Here we go. Five. Ah, oh, the run had to come to an end. We lost our three. That's a huge bummer. Um, we'll do on the front. Let's add a two. 
and a one. That, that, that's a two. I'm writing upside down like Chris. That's a one and a two, so we'll do a three unit bet. What time is it? Do I have time to keep going? I, I, we gotta stop here in a minute. I'll take just a few more cracks at it and then we'll, we'll call it here. We're not, we're not gonna get back. I'll pretend that we do though. I'll show you how this thing works out in the end. There's a five, three, four, one, five. Lose three. So here, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go and pretend like we won because I gotta get out of here. Two and a one. So we lost that. Now let's just play it out. Let's pretend that we go on the magical run here. Let's pretend that we had the magic run. It all works out. We're gonna bet two and one. That's three. Whoops. And we're gonna win it. Okay. Let's cross those out. Our next bet would also be a two and a one. So three goes in the rack. Let's say we win this one for three bucks. Boom. Back in the rack it goes. Our next bet, we're back to kind of normal. It's a two and a one. It's another three unit win. Back in the rack it goes. Now we're down here, we have a one and a one. Let's pretend that we bet two and win two. Just wanna run the whole progression with you so you can see what's gonna happen if it worked out. But it's nine o'clock, we gotta go. Again, front and back, two and one, that's three units this time. And the rack that goes. Once again, it's a one and a one, front and back. Next bet is two, that wins two. Now the pattern has us at a two and a two, it's a four. So four stays out. We get lucky and win four. Look at this run that it takes to get the hell out of here though, right? Back to the rack, our last couple of bets here are two unit bets. We're gonna bet two and win two. Cross those out. You would bet your last two right there. Let's say we won it. We should have, if I've done it all right, we should have about nine units in the rack. I think I, think I got it right. Let's see how we, how we end up here. So we started out with, here's 500 bucks. That covers our $4,000 in purples, okay? There's five, there's 10. That's the 5,000 we started with. I think I miscounted somewhere. There's 5,000 we started with. There is five, 10, 14. Oh, you know why? Uh, 14 units we have in profit. Our target was nine, five and four. Remember we had a nine unit target? There's the nine units that was the target. Here's the extra four units from that 12 that we hit, right? That's where the extras came from. That bonus win covered us for a couple extra bucks. So we actually won more than goal doing that, but because the field pays a little bit of, a little bit of spiff every once in a while. And that's it. If it works out, you run the table, there's your stated win goal, and here's a little bonus that you got from that midnight that we hit. So that's the lava, that's the, uh, the lava Um You can see in the early ones, when you catch those good runs, boy, that was, that, was like, uh, that was like stealing money. The first three shooters made 500 bucks in three rolls each, right? Boom, stealing money, easy. Easy, 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 but it's not easy. The last shooter bounced around and went on a bad, ugly run, and we were out there, we had to make like what? 20 bets to make it. And I simulated it and we still, <laughs> it took forever, right? That's Lava Shay. So um, hope you enjoyed that. It's, it's an interesting one for sure. I, again, I like the fact that you know what you're gonna win. I don't like the fact that you have no idea how long it's gonna take and how long, how much bankroll you need to get through it. It's a brutal one um, if it goes on a bad run. So um, that is an etch sketch it's, 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 it's called a Remarkable. I'll show you things. This is one of the best tools ever. Um, Ah, sorry for the back of my head view there, but yeah, this is called a remarkable tablet. Um, and it's cool. You can like write on it and you can erase it like a pen. It's awesome. This thing is my, one of my favorite note taking. I use this thing all the time for notes. Um, it's, it's a great, great little tool. Anyway, um, that's it guys. I'm going to go ahead and, um, uh, Wayne's going to make up a strategy for us. That's cool. Um, let me get out of here guys too. I'm going to go and, uh, just make sure there's no more questions. Um, before I run to the end of the show. Oh, geez. What is going on there? Um, wow. Any questions? Any last PC thoughts before I go to the, uh, the garage and make my, my paycheck? Any PCs here? Um, I saw Ken's. Let's see. Yeah, right? This is true, right? Uh, Marty, 
you do a Marty from five bucks, you're at five grand. That's where JB tells the story of the guy that lost $20,000 twice because he did that five hour field bets and lost 14 in a row or something like that twice, right? Totally happens. It totally happens. Um, yeah, so there it is. Yeah, Bakra, yeah, the, the insides of the field, right? That's interesting. Um, okay, that's it for today's show, guys. I am going to, uh, I'm going to boogie. I'm going to go, uh, go to the garage and get, make my paycheck, I hope. Wish me luck. Wish me luck. But let's do it. And um, my final thoughts are this. Any negative progression will eventually get you. You saw that here, right? There's no way that I could have got out of that, that massive crunch that we were in without a long session. It would have taken me another hour to roll out of that thing. That's the problem with some of these things. You can get up too high, too deep on a bad run, and it takes way too much to get you back. The Martingale is the one way that a one win will get you back. But even then, 10, 12 in a row, which I think we might've had seven or eight here at one point, um, that will destroy you in a Marty. This one here, you can stretch it out, but again, stretching it out only prolongs the inevitable. So you gotta be careful. All these negative progressions require a ton of bankroll. This one here will never hit table max, but it's gonna max out your actual bankroll. Might max you out for time too. So anyway, that's it. Final thoughts, be careful with negative progressions. If you don't have the bankroll for it or the, or the, or the, 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 the wherewithal to sit there for hours, don't try it. Don't try it, work positive, have the vibe, Let's get out of here. I'll see y'all in a few minutes for the paycheck. Thanks for being here. Love y'all. God bless. See ya. Bye.